gonna speak about Lisp starting from the data structure, which is both uh, its only represented data structure in memory, and it is used for the shape itself of programs. Lisp is a very unusual language in the fact that programs and data look the same in a way. Okay, uh, the data structure is called S expressions. S expression. going to see the meaning of what this S means. Um, an S expression is, is defined inductively. There are two cases, okay, a base case and a recursive case. In the base case, you see that an S expression can be a symbol, so like foo, it can be a number, like one. It can be a special object called nil. We're going to say something about this. And it can be something like a procedure, and well, other 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 things we don't uh, uh, we don't care so lot about uh, so so much about. Uh, so this is the base case, okay? So these are examples of X, of S expressions. Uh, how do we combine more uh, basis uh, basis expressions into more complex objects? Well, what with concepts? A concept just a pair. There were the other methods, so you distinguish the left part from the right part. Okay, this is just a pair of two numbers, one and two. Both one and two are as expressions, and also they are cons as an expression. Of course, here we are not forced to have base as expressions, which, is, which are called a -cons. But you can also have more complex. More complex expressions and other concepts. Okay, for example, you can have a pair with one and another pair, with two and another pair, with three and nil, for example. Okay, this is the common way of encoding a list in this. Uh, it is a convention because. Uh, uh, you see that the, 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 the rest of the list is, al is always on the right, okay? It is always the second pointer which refers to the rest of the list. We could also have used the, the, the left pointer, but this is the historical convention. So, uh, a little notation. This is called the cons, hmm, the pair itself, and also the function which builds a pair. This is called the car, and this is called the cutter. Well, there these strange names are for historical reasons, uh, because of the name of some registers on the first machine where this was implemented mm, about 50 years ago, a long time ago. Uh, the names stuck, we still use them for, for good reason. Uh, let's speak about the constructor and the selectors. This is the most interesting part. Uh, the cons is a procedure of two parameters. So you can say the cons of 1 and 2 is the, this, okay? And we write it 1.2. This is already list notation, okay? Except for the arrow. You see that this is a function call. You have a function name and the parameters. In this, in this program syntax, there is al always this uh, idea that first in a list, you write the operator, <coughs> and then you write the operands. Always in this order. Okay? We are going to be more precise about that in a minute. However, uh, cons takes two parameters and builds a new cons. Car takes a cons. Here I will be less formal. So the car of this thing is the left part, okay? It is one. And the cutter of this thing is two. Uh, okay, so now you are essentially able to, 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 to draw, to build, an S expression as large as it wants. 
you have already saw, you have, uh, you, sorry, you, we have already seen that this cons one, two is written with parentheses, with spaces. So uh, it is, I in effect, an S expression itself. Okay? Now, we have seen that concepts are represented with this dot, but there is a co more compact, shorter notation, which we usually use to, to write big S expressions. And uh, this uh, function call, for example, makes use of this abbreviation. Uh, the abbreviation is quite simple. When you have a nested cone structure, which is nested on the right, you can omit the dot and a couple of parentheses. Now, let's write this in the complete extended notation first. You have one dot, okay? So this whole big thing is a cons, okay? The first cons. What is there on the, on the left? There is one. What is there on the right? There is this, which is another cons, okay? So we have a dot. And what is there on the left of this cons? Well, there is two, okay? What's there on the right? Another cons. The cons contains three and nil. Okay, very simple. I've not, I just followed the rules. Well, if you write some least expressions which are nested on the right, uh, this notation gets a little heavy to use. So we have an abbreviation. When uh, the abbreviation is this, I should write it maybe. Okay, when the right side of a cons is another cons, of the empty list, which is nil in this language. Okay, nil, we are using it as a terminator of the list. Uh, so when the right size of the cons is like that, you can omit both the dot and the parentheses around the right part. For example, if I write one dot, one dot two, I can also write, it's exactly the same, one, one dot two. I have omitted this dot and this couple of parentheses. Okay? Please interrupt me if you don't understand something. Okay? Um, well, nil is used as a list terminator, as the empty list, and it is also sometimes written like that. Okay? But today we are going to speak about Emacs list, but there are some other list dialects with some very small differences where nil and this thing can be different. Okay? In Emacs list, for, for historical reasons, uh, we don't distinguish between the false value, the empty list, and the symbol nil. Don't worry about this, okay? It's irrelevant. But uh, you must know that this and nil are the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if I write one dot nil, mm, I can omit this dot and this, let's call them parentheses, mm, even if it's just one object, which is called nil. This is one object, okay? It is not a construction of anything. So this can be written as one, a list of one element. Okay? So you see that this compact notation is much easier to read, in particular when there are no dots. Uh, when there is a dot at the end, it means that the last element is not nil. Follow me? If the last element on the list is nil, like here, at the end you just omit the dot and the parentheses. Hmm? So you, you don't have anything to, to, to write on the right of one here. But here, when the last element is a cons, one dot two, you cannot uh, eliminate this. There's no way to abbreviate this. Hmm? Because the idea is that this is not a real list. It is called an, an improper list, if you want. This is an improper list. All this is the same. Okay? 
Um, what else? So I, I was saying that I was saying that if you have a, a dotted list, then the last element is a cons and not the empty list. Uh, you have one here, then you have okay, not this easy. Then you have another cons, which is one and two. Okay, this looks different than this because uh, there is no new at the end. Good. Uh, so we are particularly interested in how to to write lists because lists are also our expressions and programs. Um, we can speak uh, just a little bit of symbols. Uh, what a symbol is? Do you, do you know it? Uh, don't think so because it's quite different from other languages. Well, let's say that foo is a symbol. Emacs is a symbol. Uh, one plus is a strange name, but it's still a symbol. What is this? Well, it is j just a little like a string, but it's not a string. It is represented in a very different way in the machine memory. Uh, this is <coughs> just a syntactic objective, if you want. Okay, it's, it's, it is a value mm? and uh, an atomic value, so it's trivial. You can make very, very simple operations on symbols. It is not so interesting if you look at, the, uh, at it uh, this way, but the, um, its utility is first of all as a part of a program. So, for example, all variables in your, program, in your program will be symbols, okay? If I say x plus 1, mm, I don't write the, the, the list notation yet. I use x as a symbol. Well, I could use list notation because you, you already saw this. So, how do you think that a sum is written in this? There, there is always a list with first the operator and then the operands. So, open parenthesis, plus, plus is the function. Uh, one, two, for example. Okay? So, operator, operand, uh, first operand, second operand. Okay? In the case of plus, you can have any number of operands. So, you can say plus uh, one is one. You can say plus one, two, three, four, six, ten. You can use any number of parameters in this particular function. Okay? And of course, this is a list. You could write it like that. Good? Well, okay. So you, you have already learned how to use the, how to write function calls and how to build as expressions. This is the central part. Now, let's make some very, very simple discussion of metaprogramming. Uh, Please tell me your name. Yeah. Pablo. Please tell me your name. Please tell me your name. Diego. There is another possible answer to this question. You could have told me your name. Okay? No, no, I um, well, my English is not perfect. I should have said please say your name. However, if I say say your name, you could say Pablo. If I say, say your name, you answer your name. Okay, what's the difference in this case? The difference is this quoting, okay? Quoting, just the typographical characters. Uh, there is a very similar thing in this. Huh? And it is important, as you may guess, because our, prog our programs will typically work with other programs. Uh, since we are using the same data structures to represent both their data and programs, it will be very useful to reason about programs with other programs. So we have a quoting mechanism like this. If I say your name, let's say that you have already defined a variable when your name is Pablo. If I say your name, you can use the, the minus, mm, the dash, the name of, the, of symbols in, in this. It's very common and very readable. I prefer uh, that to the underscore. You could also say this. Huh? 
with a with a uh, underscore instead of a minus, but it is less beautiful and less easy to read. So typically, we, we say we, we write like this. Okay, so you can say your name, which is if the value of the variable, hmm, for example, Pablo. Of course, we also have strings in this, but strings are not the same thing. Okay, uh, here plus is a symbol; it's not a string. Okay, strings are, are used for representing text. Symbols are more efficient and they can be efficiently compared. That is the real reason for their existence. Mm. Anyway, your name can be Pablo, Pablo, but the quoting of your name, this is an apostle, is your name. Okay? So you can just write a quote before an S expression and you get the S expression itself not interpreted. So if I write quote plus one two the result will be plus one two. Good? Very simple. So let's say that your name is Pablo and uh, let's write a slightly different thing. I use a back quote now. Okay, this is a quote on the other um, with the other or with the other orientation. It is the first key on the top left on the American keyboard. No idea about the Spanish one. Uh, so, you, so you can write a back quote, open parents. Uh, what? Well, no, it's hard. Let's make a simple example. I wrote just back quote, your name. This is your name. Just like the quote. No difference here. If I write back quote, comma, your name, I get Pablo again. So what's the difference here? Um, this is called quasi quote. This is called anti quote, anti quote, or also unquote. This is called quote, simple. Um, the utility of quasi-quote and anti-quote is more evident with co more complex data structures, not with a single variable. I could say something like this. Uh, quasi-quote, my space, okay, so there are different symbols now. Name is unquote your name. Well, what is the value of this? The value of this is the same list uh, without the, un the, the, the quasi quote, where this sub expression, your name, is replaced with the value of the variable. So you have the evaluation of just a, a part of this expression, not all of it. Okay? So this will be open my name. Oh, sorry. Two symbols. My name is. Good. How can you test this with Emacs? Uh, Jose showed you yesterday that you can use Control X, Control E in the buffer uh, when your when the point is right after the S expression, right after. Okay. So if you write plus one two, you must have the cursor here. Okay, this is the, bl the blinking, I don't know if it blinks on your machine cursor. Then you write Control X, Control E, and on the mini buffer, on the bottom, you will see the result. Good? And you can also play with quotes here, yeah, if you want, to, to test this kind of stuff. Well, um, I've not said you anything uh, I don't told you uh, anything about uh, uh, everything about quotes because there is well no, it's not so important you can live with this for uh, for the moment uh, good so now you can write very simple expressions function calls and notice that there is no difference between a predefined function like plus uh, which could be considered a special operator in some languages and a different function with a more 
normal sounding name like this, or like a function you can define yourself, okay? It is syntactically the same. It is very uniform, okay? Everything looks the same in Lisp. Well, uh, let's, let's see another slightly more, less, slightly more complex, more complex um, syntactic feature, the conditional. You could say if two is less than three, how do we write this? Two is less than three. It's a function call, yeah? So? Uh, Mm, it, it is less than, so minor. Okay? 2, 3. Exactly. So it is a prefix noti a notation. Huh? You have always have first the operator, then the operands. So if 2 is less than 3, then I return uh, foo, otherwise I return bar. Notice that, that I am returning symbols. And I'm quoting them because I don't want to evaluate them. Okay? If I didn't write the quote, this would be, look at that, it's a variable. And maybe I would get an error if the variable is not defined, is not bound. Okay? So, if I, if I you write foo, and then you try to, to evaluate this with control is control e, you will get probably an error, because you, I don't think you have foo already defined in your emacs. But if you write quote foo, that's okay, and the result is foo. Good? Okay, so the condition is quite easy. You have if, you have a condition, you have a, a, a then branch, and then you have a, a, an else branch. Okay? Condition, then else. Notice that, mm, oh, and the else is optional, like this typical. Well, um, notice that the only, let's call it syntactic <coughs> sugar you have is this if. There is no then or else written anywhere. Why? Because it is very easy to parse this. this uh, it is very easy for the computer to unambiguously understand what, what the different syntactic parts are. Because when your list starts with if, it is already clear that it, it is a condition, a conditional, and that the next thing will be a condition, then we, you, we will have the then branch, and then you will have the else branch. Okay? You just have to look at the first object in the list, and you know everything. Hmm? So it is very compact and very dense. But you have be ca to be careful when you write this, and you have to indent the code. If you don't indent it correctly, it will be, it will be hard to read later. But the, the common way, for example, in this case, is to write if minor 2, 3, then you can indent here, foo just under the condition, and then bar here. This is a, an Emacs list convention. In other lists, it is not like that, but I prefer this convention because you can, from the level of indentation on the right, you can distinguish whether you are speaking about the then branch or the else branch. Okay? In other list dialects, you write both at the same level. Okay, this is only a convention, of course. Okay? The compiler will not complain if you don't indent correctly. If you write it only on one line, uh, all of one line, it, it works. But it is strongly suggested to run it like this. Well, uh, let's define a global variable. Mm, let's say that your name is Pablo. Mm, finally. Set Q. Uh, why the name set Q? Well, it's not so important. For historical reasons. Notice that uh, I've seen that the value of the symbol, your name, is a string, okay? I could have used the symbol here instead of a string. Uh, how could I, I could have, I have used the symbol. Let's write a variant of that. Let's say that your name is the uh, symbol, Pablo, instead of the string, Pablo. Quote. Quote, great. Okay? Because otherwise, without the quote, the quote, it would be the value of the variable Pablo. Pablo. Okay? Good. So you can try to evaluate this on your Emacs, and uh, you will get uh, the variable your name defined. Then you will be able to use uh, your name in your programs. Mm? 
So you can evaluate this, and then you can evaluate your name. With and without quotes. Now, now it, it will work, because your name is bound. Any questions? OK, how to uh, play with this in Emacs? Uh, I think, personally, I think the best way is in the buffer scratch, when you are making experiments. Uh, otherwise, you can write esc colon escape colon and uh, you can directly edit your code in the mini buffer. Okay? And this works well when your code is short, when you just want to call a function and see the result. Uh, that way is usable. But otherwise, I strongly suggest you to edit your code, to write it cleanly, and to use control is control to evaluate. There is also a useful command in Emacs uh, to evaluate the root buffer. Okay? You can write meta x evaluate buffer. Eval buffer, right? Eval buffer. So all the code in the buffer will be evaluated. Um, another minor syntactic thing, um, comments. Well, <coughs> comments are <coughs> starting with a semicolon mm, and they extend until the end of the line. So you can write something here mm, and it is conventional to use a different number of semicolons depending on the importance of the part you are commenting. If you write just a, a, little, a little piece of text after a line on the right, to make it clear, you use one semicolon. If you're uh, writing, for example, the, the header of a file, you will use three or four semicolons. It is just a syntactic convention. You will see it uh, used in the, in the code you're going to read. It's not so important. The idea is that you start a comment with a semicolon, and it extends till the end of the line. There is no need for closing it. Okay? It is like this in C or C++ or Java. Okay, what else? Essentially now you know all the syntax of Lisp. There's really nothing more. And you also know a good part of the semantics, in reality. You have not seen functions yet, but they are quite easy. Before functions, let's see the let construct, which is very useful. Everything okay to here? Okay, how do you buy the local variables? Let's say that you want to, to use uh, some value for x in some context. But you want to forget about the name x after uh, your, so your expression is evaluated. You want a local variable, okay? which is only visible in a little part of your program. So you could say, let's say it in English. Let x be 42 in x plus 1. Okay? You are defining x with some, uh, with some value in some context. Okay? And you are only interested in that. OK, let's translate this into a list. Very easy. Let. Double parentheses here. OK? Double. X, 42. Close the double parentheses. In. Plus X1. Close, close. So, in this body, the let. Plus. One, close, close. This is called the body. And this is one binding. Uh, so in this body, you can see the value for x, which was bind, bound uh, only locally. Okay? If you write this and you try to use x later out of the leg, it will not work. Okay? Um, why do we use double parentheses here, not a single pair? 
Well, there is a good reason because we could have more than one binding. I could say, for example, let x be 42 and y be 1 in, oh, sorry, in plus x, y. Okay? In this case, I have bound two local variables, x and y. And the, the, this close parenthesis is used to, 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 to understand where, when the, the list of bindings finishes. Okay? Of course, this is a list. And notice that, uh, unlike some other functional languages, uh, lists are not typed at all. It is not, uh, uh, you're not compelled to, to make all the elements of the list the same type. Not at all. Okay? There's no static type checking here. So you can write a list like one, two, foo, nil, in a, a cons, uh, a function, okay? You're perfectly free to do this. Another list, you can make lists of lists, of, of course, if you want. And this is even more true for programs, okay? This is the this is one form of let. It's very easy to understand. Oh, by the way, this can be expressions, okay? Not necessarily constants. You can write a, a complicated thing here if you want. It will be evaluated and then bound to that variable. Well, this is one form of let. There is another form which is called let star, and uh, it's very similar. The only dif uh, this is an asterisk, okay? The only difference is that. Mm, when you evaluate, when you mm, bind more than one variable, you can use a variable you have just bound in the next binding. Okay? So if you first bind x to 1, then in the binding of y, you can use x. Okay? This is the difference with less star. You can do this with less star, but not with let. Okay? Not terribly important. You could also uh, have, uh, or only use less star in practice. Mm, it would work. It would work. Uh, maybe you would have to rename some variables, but this is more than enough to program. But you have more forms. Okay? So now we should talk about functions. Is everything okay till now? Uh, well, let's debug this interactive. This is what improvised. I didn't prepare anything, so uh, I don't remember some details. Uh, please, can you try with me, uh, for me the result of this? Let's say that I want to do message format double quote uh, double quote is not double apostles okay it's the double quote character percent big S forty two does it work when you evaluate this control is control e at the end Okay, it, it writes 42 in the mini buffer. Yeah, good. And if you write something different here, for example, A percent, that would be guess? A 42. Good, okay, it works. So now, you have seen that uh, the, the, thanks, you have seen that the function message uh, prints something in the mini buffer. It, it can be used for output. Okay? It is like print in C, if you want. Well, this is useful for debugging, if you want. And uh, we can do some, you can, we can do a little exercise before we're speaking about functions. Let's say that, simple exercise, okay, what can it be? Well, 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 well. Uh, Euclid's algorithm, okay, for, for computing. What does it mean? Uh, Oh, okay. okay. This, this is a formal C, exactly like in C. 
and percent big S should be the, the format for any kind of object. Okay? So you, you don't care about the, uh, the, the, the type of this, and it will be just evaluated and, and printed. This could be a cons, for example. Instead of 42, you could write cons of 1 and 2, close, close, or even a quoted uh, a cons like this. It's exactly the same. Okay? Uh, you will see that it will be printed. Um, you know Euclid's algorithm for computing the maximum common divisor? Well, it's easy. You take x and y as two numbers. Let's say that x is 100 and y is 80. What do you do? You, sub you subtract uh, the, bigger, the, 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 the smaller one from the bigger one. Okay? Uh, 100 less, uh, sorry, 100 minus 80 gets you 30, 20, sorry, gets you 20, and then you have 20 and uh, 80. To subtract the, this from this, okay, so uh, 80 minus 20 becomes 60, 60 minus 20 becomes 40, okay, and so on. No, it doesn't work like that. Oh, we are going to edit this. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your place algorithm? No? Well. Okay, let's make something less interesting. Um, okay, let's write an infinite an infinite loop <coughs> which counts. Okay, so you could say y. Hmm? New construct, we have not spoken about y yet. Why true? True is written like this. Okay? It looks like a symbol. T. Good. While true, we do. Well, what do we do? We want to bind a, a, a local variable. We want to assign a local variable because this will change the variable in the uh, within the while loop, but we didn't define it yet. So we can use a let. We can say let n to be 0 in y true set q this is an assignment okay it's like a single equal sign you see set q n what is the successor of n n plus 1 hmm? it is open plus n 1 right so this is an assignment, okay? This is, I write a comment here, it is like n plus plus. You see. Good? You assign to n the result of computing the sum of n and 1. Uh, so you change the value of n and then you write it like this. No, okay, do it. And then close, close. Close, close, yeah. Okay, you can try to write the correct code for this. Let's say that in the mini buffer you want to see a, a growing uh, sequence of numbers. Uh, you may need to insert another function code, which is Z4. Is it needed in this case? I don't know. I'm not sure. Remember an important thing that you can always interrupt uh, your script or your program with Control G. Okay, it is the abort command. Very important. So if you are in, in an infinite loop, you can exit by Control G. Okay, so please try to make this thing work. Later, I, in 10 minutes, we're going to speak about functions. Uh, I mean, if t is true, then f is false. Uh, you don't need a conditional here, because it is only an infinite increment. No, I know it's working. It's really work. uh, It works, okay. Yeah. But, but you have to write something here. Uh, hmm? like Message something. Okay. Hmm? Here, before the comment. You can 
we can also make something more, more fun. We could have a growing list. Hmm? Instead of making a number be the number plus one, we could change the list to be the list with an other piece attached. Okay? So instead of saying n becomes n plus one, we could say, for example, I'm writing it be below, we could say x becomes the cons of the symbol a and x. Okay? What do we get by this? Well, if x uh, at the beginning is nil, for example, after this command, it will become the cons of a and nil. Okay? Which is just the same as the, the list with a inside. After another call of the, after another execution of this command, we will have a a, and then a a a, etc. Okay. So you could say let n to be nil, and then instead of this set q, you can use this set q. Should change a little. But this is not very a very beautiful style of programming. We are using while loops. This is the traditional imperative style of programming. The same you can do in C. List really shines when you use the functional style, when you use recursive functions, even if the implementation of recursion is not exceptional. In Max Lisp, it could be made better. Uh, okay, did you try the, the loop thing? Always remember this. When you evaluate an expression in a buffer, you put the cursor right after the expression, so the point is between the parentheses and the white space just on the right, and you use control e x control e okay, to evaluate. Of course, if you don't fill the, the space here, if you don't write the message called uh, your Emacs will block if you evaluate this because it is in an infinite loop where it displays nothing. Okay, so your Emacs will stop working until you exit with Ctrl G. This will not exit Emacs, it will exit your expression. Okay, okay I would say. No, I, di I didn't see yet any correct message code here. I, I would say after this, we can make a little pause of 10 minutes and then uh, speak about functions. And that's essentially all you need of know, uh, all, all you need knowing about the uh, Emacs list. Put this here, and it just in the zero. Uh, yeah, this why this should be correct. Yeah. Oh, yes. In zero, uh, anything else, it doesn't work. Uh, if you evaluate this, then you, you just get the, this message. Yeah. And it's not bound because it is bound to this whole length. So you have to evaluate the length. There's a problem with parentheses. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So you have to close this. Okay. Uh, see. So is that what we want to inside the length? Yes, it's, it's important. Thank you. Th thank you. Um, when you have the body, the length. The body should physically be behind, it will be inside the left. Okay, parentheses must be all around. You cannot write left binding something, be uh, something close the left, mm, and then use a variable which has bound in the body later after. Okay, if you want to to do something with those variables, you have to do it in the body before closing this parenthesis. Good. So
So the solution was very simple, sim very similar to this. You had to write open message, open format, double quote, the same, I guess, uh, and close, close, uh, and that's all. Two closes, yeah. Um, do you, have you understood the idea of format? Format takes a message string and some other parameters and returns a string. Okay? It's not like print, it's like screens. Okay? The one which works with strings. And of course the advantage here is, is that you don't have to pre-allocate explicitly the string. It will be created for you and will be, it will be just large enough. And of course it will be destroyed automatically. There is a garbage collector here. There is no need for, for using malloc and free. Okay? It's automatic. So it is a very high level language and it is good for extending your program. It is good for writing mm, most, I ideally, of the semantics, of the functionality of Emacs in this way. In fact, if you look at the source code of Emacs, you will see that only a small part is seen. Near, nearly all the, the code, particularly new code, is list. Mm? So for example, the search functionality that Jose has, has shown you yesterday, Control S and Control R, is implemented completely in Lisp, I think. Okay? Yeah, sure. Um, Lisp is easier to modify than C, and uh, it's easier to, to make experiments, to make tests with it. So when you have the choice of modifying the C part of, the, of Emacs or writing an extension. An extension is nearly always the right thing, even if the performance may be a little less good. Mm, just a little. Um, when you use Control X, Control E, like I've shown you, uh, the code is interpreted. There is an interpreter there, uh, which is slowish, but good for testing. Otherwise, you can byte compile the code. Mm, the, there is good information on the manual for that. It's not important today. Um, how to have more information? Well, in the book the, we have given you, the new Emacs manual, um, you have a good, uh, very good exposition of Emacs, but not about the programming part. There is a separate manual for that. Of course, it's free documentation, GFDL. You can download it, and you probably have uh, it on your machine. Other, it, al it also exists on on paper published by the GNU Press. And that is a book about the same size, only for Emacs Lisp. It's very complete, very well written. There is also a tutorial introduction by Robert Chesson, which starts from scratch. Okay? Uh, it's even easier than my uh, small lecture today. So it is an introduction to Lisp for non programmers let's say. Uh, also that is very, a very good read if you want you to get a a good understanding of, of, of Lisp. They say that the Chessel's book is for, for absolute beginners, and the official e-Lisp book is for um, a little more advanced programmers who already know another language. Okay, uh, let's break for some minutes, then we can speak about functions. Good?